and welcome to a very special lockdown episode of Valley Stories coming to you via Zoom. Uh, I'm very pleased to be joined uh, by, quite frankly, one of the best players to, to represent our club, certainly in the modern era. Uh, last week he announced his retirement from football, uh, so we had to get a word with him. Uh, joining us from France, it's Mr. Jan Kermigan. Uh, good afternoon, Jan. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good, good, good. Um, obviously, we're going to talk about all things Charlton. Uh, your career with us at the Valley, how, how it came about and how you leaving came about, all that kind of stuff. Um, but let's talk a little bit about the very beginning, as we always do in these interviews. Um, growing up in France uh, as, a, as a, a young little Jan, um, where did your love of football begin? How did you find your way in football from a very young age? Yeah, I think I started playing football maybe at five years old or something, something like that. Um, where where my pa parents uh, lived, uh, there was neighbors with lots of uh, of boys around me. So we used to to play, you know, just in in front of my parents' house. There was like a land uh, with a with a goal. The mm. parents built for us. So it's been my playground for many many years, and uh, we used to play yeah every day under the rain every every time. So you, um, your first club you joined was um, Vans, wasn't it? Which is where you um, you grew up and where you were born, your local club. Yeah. Um, obviously, at the age of 14, you, you were diagnosed with leukaemia. So that was a huge thing for anyone to deal with, I, I can only imagine, um, especially at a young age. Um, that must have been quite difficult at that time. But obviously, if you're trying to play football and, and make a career of it and at such a young age, um, having to, to battle something like that. Yeah, of course. Um, so my first club was uh, Minimur, which is another club in my hometown. It's not the biggest one, but uh, a really good one for the, the, the young, uh, young guys. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then when I was 14, I think I moved to, um, to Stade René, which is uh, like a first league uh, club. And uh, of course, my dream was to, to become uh, a, footballer, a professional footballer. But uh, after a few months, uh, I've been diagnosed with uh, leukemia and uh, everything was uh, like over for me. And uh, of course, uh, unfortunately, the doctors told me like it will be uh, we, football would be finished for me. Not not only because of leukemia, but because of the consequence of the treatment. I had problem with my knees and uh, you know like the the, the bones, and uh, they told me like it would be maybe difficult for me to to play again football. Maybe you know just in the garden with my friends, but not as a as a mm -hmm. professional or, or even in a high level. So, how long did it take for first of all your recovery from from that? But how long did it take before you realised that actually you could overcome that, despite what you were told by the doctor? Uh, quite a few years, to be fair. I've got uh, the treatment like uh, last for two years with a uh, chemo and and lots of you know uh, tablets every day. Uh, and then I had my, uh, uh, we say my second problem after the, the leukemia. It was about my, how to say, my knees because the bones were like uh, too soft. Uh, so I had to protect my uh, my um, growing cartilage. I don't know if you understand what I mean. Yeah, but yeah. My, my knees. So I had to protect it. And then I've been uh, in a wheelchair for about a year to make sure you know I don't uh, aggravate my situation. Uh, and finally, I've been able to play again football. Maybe I was 19 or something, roughly 18, 19. Uh, but even today, my, my friend remind me like the first time I came, uh, I came for training. I was not even able to to jog around the, the pitch. One lap was like a, was like a marathon for me. So I was a bit like a, you are at the first, you know, step of a long, long. Uh, long, long uh, stairs, uh, long journey. So at this moment, I was just thinking to enjoy life and, you know, have a like, social life with my friend. And uh, if I could play a little bit football, it would be, would be good, good enough. But uh, after a few months and years, I started to feel a bit better, get my uh, uh, fitness back. And, uh, and then I wanted uh, a little bit more like competition. So I almost, you know, stopped playing football to to play rugby with my friends as well. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> which I was like really close. Uh, but finally, I signed for um, the men club in, in my own time, uh, Van Van Olympic Club, 
it was supposed to be for the reserve team to be like a, uh, one of the main you know players for the the reserve team and uh, and finally just a week before to for come back for preseason for the first team they called me and they said like uh, we want you to train with the the first team uh, and then you know I started the preseason with the first team and uh, physically I was really um, not say bad, but like uh, uh, not as fit as uh, the, the the players. But it took me a few weeks, and after preseason, I started to play with the first team, and then I started to uh, think about maybe playing on a higher level again. But it took me a long to um, to really decide, you know, because I felt like I needed to to go away from my uh, friends and family. And uh, to be focused on football, not, not only enjoying life, uh, but uh, just football to make sure I can try something, which uh, which I decided uh, in 2004. I uh, decided to, to leave Van uh, to go to Châtelot for a year. And uh, at this time, I was a student as well. So I felt like uh, I gave myself one year, one season. And uh, if I can succeed, I will carry on playing football. If not, I come back and uh, will carry on my my studies, and hopefully work for me and uh, assign after that season uh, my first professional contract for Grenoble. I mean, that must have been a, a huge moment for you. I mean, did, did did the experience that came years before that did that in a weird way really give you the sort of strength that that you had for the rest of your career and certainly we saw you know into your thirties the, the the extra sort of fight that maybe other players wouldn't have been playing at that level at, at that sort of age um because you started later if you like you think that's yeah. Uh, yeah that's a question i've been asked a few times and uh, i think that's a really good question and sometimes i will say i can't really i can answer a part of it, but not uh, the full question because, uh, of course, uh, the fact that I started late uh, gave my, maybe my body a bit of rest. I was maybe more fresh and uh, in my um, early 30s than uh, most of the players who play for 10 or 15 years, you know, every day. And and uh, I didn't do that. So maybe I was a bit more uh, fresh than them. Uh, and maybe that's why I've been uh, uh, playing with... Uh, uh, quite high intensity until uh, until late, and uh, at some point, um, what happened during my uh, my um, young age, and uh, what I've been through, gave me something maybe different. And uh, I would say, I, I know how hard I've uh, I've uh, fought to to be where I am and to to do what I was doing. So. I know, I know it's so difficult, but I never give up. And I feel like uh, if you believe and if you work hard, you can uh, achieve lots of uh, good, uh, good, good yeah. things. Yeah. And uh, and as I said, the, the other part I would say is a negative part, even if uh, it's not negative. But I would never know where I would have been if I had uh, uh, had no leukemia and started playing football. You know, maybe 18 in uh, in professional football or stuff like that. But as I always said, I can't have uh, regret or anything because I will never know. So it's no yes. point to think about it too much. Yeah, obviously, you said you, you had to fight so much to, to even get that first professional contract and, and get to where you were. But at that point, at that base, if you like, did you have set yourself goals that like you wanted to... Because you were playing in the, the second tier, right, in, in France yeah. at that point. So were you aiming to get to the top tier in Ligue 1? Or League One, um, or were you always having an eye on someone, somewhere like England, moving to England in the Championship or something like that? I mean, what goals did you set yourself? Did you set yourself goals to play at the highest level? Yeah, I would say the first goal was to, of course, to to play and be uh, be part of the of the team, and even more, like I would say, uh, of the starting eleven, be a be a proper player, not only sitting on the bench and do some. Uh, uh, some minutes every games, which I did at first because you know when you sign from lower league, most of the time you are not the the main man, uh, especially as a striker. You got like players in front of you, so you have to to prove yourself. And uh, as soon as you get some minutes, you have to to do something, which uh, which I did quite well. And hopefully, uh, and hopefully uh, it make me have a, a more chance, you know, to 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 play and start playing. So. After that, I was thinking, yeah, I think I've got the quality to to be a good player in the, 
in a league two in france and uh, and now my aim is to to be to be even better and, and play in uh, in the first league so so when i um, i played two years uh, for grenoble uh, i would say it was my two like uh, learning years uh, as a professional because i've not been really a starter but i have uh, i've had a few of course a few games i started but I felt like now I need to move somewhere where they're gonna take me to be their striker or their number nine or ten or whatever, but to be you know the a player who will play, not only sitting on the bench uh, as I did most of the time at Grenoble. So I moved to to Reims, and 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 there I was thinking now you have to to show how good you are, and uh, if you can maybe uh, get promoted with Reims or, or maybe have a chance to to be a uh, draft by another club and playing in the first league in France. So, um, so unfortunately, it didn't happen. It happened quite well for me individually, but uh, as a team, we, we, we didn't like, manage to, to finish in, uh, in the top of the table or even too high. So we, we struggled a little bit and it didn't help for me to, to get a move. But uh, I felt like at the end of these two years, my my head was was clear. It's like you move in the first league, or you take a chance to go abroad and uh, and play in England. So I had a few contact with some clubs, and uh, a late injury in that season where I was out of contract because I wanted to be free. Uh, a late injury unfortunately uh, stopped me to to sign for first league club. And uh, after my recovery, I uh, finally decided to, to sign for Leicester in England. Okay, so I mean that must have been quite an exciting time moving abroad, coming to England. Uh, you know, big club like Leicester City. How did that move come about? Was was there other options in the Championship that? that you um, I think at this time uh, I had the club like Coventry, or okay. I'm yeah. not sure exactly, but I had two, one or two or three uh, other clubs like could be interested. But the the most uh, interesting one was uh, Leicester, who did a proper offer uh, and really wanted to, to, I would say, to sign me. So uh, of course, after um, uh, looking at internet or or some uh, information to, to, to know exactly the club because when you're French, you don't know really Leicester. You know, you know the big club like uh, Arsenal or, or Manchester, but Leicester was not like a, a club I knew really. So I had to, to, to look at, at the club and the information and, and uh, I found that it was a quite a big club as well. And um, I think we all know, like uh, especially in England more maybe than in France, but we say a club who's been like relegated in lower league for some time for a financial problem or administration and stuff like that. When they get back to like a business, I would say they are able sometimes to you know to get promoted one or two times in a, in a row, which happened to some clubs because they are big clubs and when they when they are yeah we say back to business they can do good things. So I felt like yeah let's still just got promoted from League One, but they are still gonna do. They can do something well in, in championship as well. Yeah, and obviously that nearly did happen, didn't it? Obviously they got into the playoffs. Um, I guess one of the things you're unfortunately best remembered for by Leicester fans was that penalty in that playoff semi-final. Um, that must be quite a tough experience for you personally. Yeah, it was a diff- difficult one because uh, I think what didn't help me was like. Um, you know the club was the team was just promoted from League One, so they had a strong, uh, uh, I would say, friendship and partnership, and uh, and the season was started already. So they they already did like uh, seven or eight games. I don't know before I signed, and uh, and when I arrived, I felt like I was like too much. You know what I mean? So the manager wanted me, but it's like the player ne- never really. Uh, wanted me to to get involved and uh, and when you play sometimes you play with your best friend who is a striker and you don't want you know the guy especially a French guy who come from nowhere uh, taking his place so I felt like most of the squad didn't really help I, I didn't speak very well English so it was difficult to to be integrated you know with the with the chat with the the the, the life so so I felt like it was a really tough experience. And uh, I was working out. I remember going 
at the at the club sometimes on their days off uh, to train myself, uh, do some uh, you know uh, treadmill uh, runs, uh, gym or whatever to make sure I was uh, ready to to go when I would be given a chance. So so yeah, it was a difficult experience for me. And one of the people who were at, was at Leicester City at that time, obviously, was Chris Powell. Um, let's talk about your relationship with him because he, he was the one who brought you to Charlton, obviously, after everything that happened at Leicester. And clearly, he did that because he was a big believer in you. Um, is it fair to say that that move to Charlton, him bringing you there and having that trust and faith in you was something that potentially saved your career at that point? Yeah, that's uh, massive. And uh, the, the good thing is uh, when, when I signed for Leicester, uh, we, had, um, like, we struggled to find uh, the, the, the deal I was happy with and, uh, and them too. So I had to stop, uh, I would say, the, the talks and say, listen, you give me a six-month contract until uh, Christmas. I don't want to sign more on your on your." Um, on your condition, you know, the way you want, okay? But I'm going to show you like I'm good enough to deserve what I want or what I, I was asking for. So I said, okay, fair enough. And uh, I said, okay, I'm going to prove myself. And, uh, and then if I'm good enough, I will sign a new deal and maybe it will give me uh, something uh, I feel better, you know? So that was like a, yeah, a big bet for, for me. And in the same time, I, did, I was not blocked, you know, by the, the deal. So... I felt like if you're good enough, you might get something good. And if not them, maybe you will be seen by other clubs who will, who will be you know, happy to sign you. So I did that. I didn't play too much. And the funny thing is uh, after that, they, they wanted to sign me a new deal on the manager, um, Nigel Pearson. Yeah. So they signed me a, a, a new deal, like two and a half years to complete you know, the, the six months, uh, maybe in November or something. Uh, and the manager had to fight with the uh, the, the the owner because the owner said like why well, you want me to sign this this player because he doesn't play or do you don't play him so at this time I remember I was thinking I don't know why I'm not playing because I'm training very well and uh, he, he said lots of uh, good uh, things uh, about me like I was uh, training uh, with the best finisher in front of the goal and which I, I thought was enough for me as a striker to to get a chance you know. Uh, and after that, I was thinking it's maybe because you got like a short-term contract, and it might be um, a problem for the club if I'm playing well and uh, I am out of contract. I could move, you know, to some somewhere else. So I was thinking that maybe he wants me maybe to 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 find um, to to sign a bigger and long-term deal before to 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 play me more. So I was like, uh, okay, good. So now I'm gonna play maybe a bit more. And finally, it didn't really change. I, I, I still kept uh, playing like a uh, few games away, especially, but at home, I never played one one game uh, as a starter, which was for me a big blow because, as you know, when you play at home, most of the time, you got more chance to score goals and create chances than uh, away from home. Yeah. So I was like, uh, I was like, you know, it's not really fair because sometimes same away from home, I was playing up front on my own. And then uh, he subbed me off and uh, put two strikers on. And then you create more chances, in, more chances, and you think, oh, it's not, you know, it's not fair. And same uh, at home, play with two up front, and uh, me, I just put me in for ten minutes. So, so yeah, um, the good thing is uh, to, to come back to Chris Parr. Uh, the good thing is uh, Chris uh, saw me almost every day training. So my mentality, so my uh, determination to work hard and to not give up and maybe my qualities. And, and I was thinking when he, when he called me, I was thinking the best thing is uh, in England, no, not nobody, but not many person will know you perfectly, I would say. So he's maybe the guy who know you the most because he, he saw you train every day. And uh, if he wants you, that means he's going to play you or maybe give you more chance than I did before. Uh, the only problem for me at the moment, at the minute, was to uh, play in a lower league, yeah. which is completely different. In France, I would have said no. But in England, I was thinking you have to maybe take a chance and uh, hopefully you will be promoted because they were doing well. And, uh, and you have to believe, and, and if you get promoted, you will have uh, maybe lost one year, 
but you will be maybe in the in the right uh, place, you know, to establish yourself as a as a player in England. So yeah. I took my chance, and uh, it appeared to be the, <laughs> maybe the best uh, decision <laughs> I, I, I took. Yeah. So obviously, the, the season was was well underway, wasn't it? It was September when you signed. But when when did the first conversation with with Pauli happen for you to come? Was it? Ongoing for a while, and you had to make a decision, or was it a case of you were available? He knew uh, you, and he, he believed in you, so he wanted to bring you the chance. Yeah, I've, I, if I remember, I've been put, uh, I've been asked to to train with the um, Leicester City youth team, like in beginning of August or maybe end of July, when I came back from uh, uh, pre-season tour. Um, and then, you know, I've, I was just thinking you have to stay fit, and uh, hopefully, you would get something. And I think I've been through the end of my contract before to resign, mm -hmm. so end of August. And uh, I don't remember if been if been uh, if I've been talking with the the gaffer before, maybe a little bit before, I'm not sure. Uh, but after it took me a few days, you know, to take a of course the right decision and uh, and uh, and yeah, to have a proper chat with the club and uh, find the the best way to have a, a good deal for both and and be happy to sign. So obviously, you, you settled in very, very quickly <laughs> at the Valley. Um, how, how quick did you feel you settled in? Did you feel, especially coming from Leicester, what you said there about the players and it, you weren't particularly uh, welcomed, if you like, I think that's fair to say. Um, was that very different at Charlton? Did you feel like, as a group, you were made to feel more welcome and, and it was a, a better environment for you as a, as a person? Yeah, I think uh, the, the group was completely different and uh, I would say the situation too because if you compare Leicester who just got promoted, you know, you are in a, in a feeling like uh, you got, the, you know, a really good team, a really good squad mm -hmm. and sometimes one player, especially uh, from abroad, uh, a French guy, you know, doesn't speak your language or not, not well, you don't really want to talk to him too much and uh, and finally it's like you, you almost like forget him, like he's not here. So at Charlton it was completely different because the, the manager wanted me, and I think the players knew that uh, because he had me at Leicester, so they, they were aware of, of, of that situation. And uh, secondly, they were in League One, which was maybe compared to French League Two. Uh, I would not, I would say, not better, maybe. So they maybe respect my uh, my level, and and they were nice people as well. To be honest with you, they were really a, a good bunch of lads and. And and after you know it's uh, what you do on the pitch to help you to be to be uh, loved by your teammates as well. Yeah, I mean the first couple of games, obviously starting on the bench, you came off the bench, and scored um, up at uh, MK Dons, wasn't it? The, the first game, first goal yep. in Sheffield United. So straight away in your own head, you must have thought, right now I'm I'm getting getting into the the plans to be starting now because you're coming on, you're making a difference, and that's exactly what happened, wasn't it? Yeah, there was a, a perfect start to be fair because uh, I remember um, MK Dance away uh, when Greeny uh, did the cross for me. Uh, uh, he was on the bench uh, with me as well, I think. Yeah. So we came off the, came off the bench uh, both and uh, I was thinking I had a good, good impact from both. Uh, you have to carry on and uh, the following game was, uh, was it Sheffield United? Yeah, I'm away games, we had, yeah. And that one was... Uh, Maybe it's the, 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 the starting point of my uh, Charlton career, I would say, more than M. Cadence because I was on a bench and I remember we had a, a corner. And uh, I think it's the manager who said, like, uh, put him on, put him on now, now. I want him for, like, you know, he was, like, uh, pushing me to, to come on and me as well for the corner. And you can't dream of uh, having uh, your first touch with the goal. <laughs> yeah, especially at Chef, you were, like... Uh, uh, the other big club, you know, was pushing for for promotion. So, yeah, you couldn't dream of a, a better start coming from the bench, corner, header, goal, <laughs> one year. So, by that point, was it was it quite? It was obvious you were settling in. You you must have been much happier um, to begin with at Charlton. Um, yeah, that must have been pleasing for you that that you you were somewhere where the fans immediately took to you as well. You became a hero quite quickly. Um, your teammates liked you. You were scoring goals. Did it feel like you were finally settled in England by that point? Yeah, of course. I was like, I was really happy, and I felt like uh, I would be uh, fitting well in the in the team. 
uh, I remember Bradley White Phillips who was up front with me. Like I felt like we could be really complementary, uh, and and the rest of the team was like uh, really strong and and I felt like yeah, this could be a, a really really big big season. And it was, wasn't it? It was an incredible season. Um, we won the title, uh, motion back to the championship, 101 points, a uh, record total. It couldn't have gone any better than that, could it, for a first season at a new club? Yeah, it could have. I think we dropped some <laughs> points. <laughs> yeah, we, we dropped, we dropped some, some points where I think we could have done better. But of course, no, it was a, a perfect season. And uh, I think we were uh, definitely the best team in the league that season. And we, we fully deserve to, to win the league and, and, and get promoted. Uh, the, yeah, the only regret is I think we needed some uh, some uh, new faces, you know, the, the following season to to help us to to get a bit more competitive for the championship, which yeah. didn't really happen. But that's uh, that's yeah. football. We'll, we'll get to that in, in a moment. But sticking on the the eleven twelve season. What do you? What made that side so good? Do you think was it was it the the management of Chris Powell? Was it the general togetherness of the group? Was it you know the players we had? It just had a special feeling, didn't it? Uh, that year. I mean, what what do you think it was about about that side that that made it so special? I think, of course, you, know, you can't have a, a good season and a good team without a good manager. So, I think the manager was uh, loved by every everybody. Uh, in the squad, not only the starting eleven or or the fourteen, but the, the the whole squad. I think he was a, a really nice guy, and uh, I think really honest as well. And uh, keep the face from the, the players who even play too much, you know. So that was a big part of uh, our success. And uh, the other part was, I think we, yeah, we had a really good group, uh, good togetherness. We 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 like each other. And you could, I think, see that uh, on the pitch. Uh, we play with a lot of uh, envy, and and I think we, yeah, we, we just like to be together. Was there a game from that season that really stands out as a particular moment where you thought we're going to do this, we're going to win promotion with with a real deal? If you like? Oh, I think from almost from the start because we, I think we had a really good start and. Uh, and uh, after a few games, I felt like yeah, they are all really good, you know, individually. And as a team, we look to be really strong. So, so I felt like yeah, quite early in the in the season, I felt like we we can you know push for automatic promotion. Uh, I remember one game maybe quite important was uh, for me uh, at this field at home. It was a quite big one. It was a big one and. Uh, yeah, a few others, but I think we we were really strong and uh, we we feel no nobody in the st- in the league. Now let's get to the the very last game of that season at the Valley, Hartlepool United. An argument that Charlton fans have been having <laughs> for for eight years amongst themselves. That goal, the Jan Baston, the the volley from the uh, the byline. Did you mean it? Uh, <laughs> do, do I have the 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 answer? <laughs> No, as I always said, I've tried to, of course, to to put uh, the ball back into the goal direction. I would say, but to clearly do what I did was, uh, of course, a bit of luck as well. But you still have to <laughs> manage to do it and uh, touch uh, well the ball, <laughs> yeah, and, and find a way to to put it back into the goal. So, of course, after to to take that you know that direction just. Uh, Behind, uh, behind the, um, the goalkeeper, and just yeah, of course it's a bit of a look as well. Is that one of your one of your favourite goals you scored for Charlton over that time? Uh, to be fair, uh, the other day I watched uh, a YouTube video with uh, all my goals I uh, scored for Charlton, and uh, there was a few I almost forgot. Yeah, uh, I remember when I watched it, but you know before that I was like, uh, yeah, I forgot that one. Uh, but yeah, there was a, a few good ones, a few good ones, some volleys. Or yeah. <laughs> of course, this one stu- stood out because you know it was a really tough to to score. But there was a few as well because of the the importance of the goal. Were as important, I would say. Yeah, true, true. Um, so after scoring that goal, you were able to get your medal 
lift the uh, League One trophy aloft um, after everything that happened previously, you know, a couple of years before, the year before. Um, it must have been a special moment for you to, to get hold of that trophy and, and something that you can show for your achievements. Yeah, of course. Though the a big, um, uh, a big re revenge, or not only revenge, because I didn't really wanted the revenge. Just wanted to, yeah, to enjoy and uh, and show I could I could do something in England and uh, be a good player in, in in England football. So it was just the start of something, and and I was thinking now you're gonna play at the level you want to play. Yeah, at, at least because you always aim to to play at the higher one. But I was thinking championship is the, the, the division. I have uh, failed at Leicester. Yeah. Or I've not been given a chance to, to show I was good enough to, to play. Uh, so now you're going you're gonna to do it. Yeah. I mean, as you said before, we didn't have... I mean, things were going on behind the scenes as far as budgets and, and stuff like that were going. So we couldn't really add much to what we had. Uh, I think we brought in Ricardo Fuller and, and Laurie Wilson. That was pretty much it. Um, but we still finished ninth uh, and three points off the playoffs at the end of that season. We had a really good end, didn't we, to that season? Yeah. Um, it was a huge achievement, wasn't it, considering? I mean, it, was that just, as you said, almost like Leicester when, when they got promoted and they had this sort of core group? Just that being on the crest of a wave and, and was it part of that, you think? Yeah, of course, it's part of that. That's why um, uh, I am still, you know, disappointed we didn't, you know, bring just maybe... A bit more players like with good qualities who could really improve the the, the team. Uh, but I think the biggest disappointment was not that season because we we proved we could be a, a good squad, a good team, and uh, be really close to to get the playoffs. But the following season, that's where we desperately needed some uh, addition, and nothing happened again, and that's where we started to to crumble. Yeah, exactly. We will get to that in a minute. Um, <laughs> but let's, let's stick on that first season back. Um, your first opportunity to play against Leicester City, and you loved playing against Leicester City because every time we played them, you scored and we won. That's, yeah, that, <laughs> that must that, have been nice. I was thinking uh, I fought the other day, and, and yeah, of course, it was uh, really good memories because uh, after what happened for me against Leicester, uh, it was funny to, yeah, to have so much success against them after. With Charlton, with yeah, goal, goal scored, a win, so you couldn't uh, aim for a better, better situation. And of course, the uh, the the shift celebration as well was uh, was something that were well, one of our favourite images of you, really. But um, <laughs> that was a message to the Leicester fans more than anything else. Sometimes when you were doing that scoring against them, just because they were booing me. Uh... As I could imagine, of course, uh, the, the best way to uh, to reply was on the pitch by doing what I've done, uh, scoring a goal and uh, and win the game with uh, with my team. And uh, the, this thing was just uh, it was more my my teammates. To be fair, I think uh, if I remember, were saying like, "If you score, you're gonna do something." Or, and I I never really celebrate too much my goals, or I don't want to be too much uh, too demonstrative, you know. Or those things, but it came like a because it, it was due to happen. I just wanted to say now you have to. Shush. Shush. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Um, now that's that season in the championship. You had a bit of a battle with Johnny Jackson for for goals. Who was going to be top scorer? Um, you both finished on twelve goals that season, um, but you scored twice on the final day. I think he scored one as well against Bristol City. You scored an incredible volley, I remember that. You almost scored a hat-trick, you, you'd done a chip off the crossbar, didn't you? Which would have yeah. been an incredible goal. Um, was, was Jacko annoyed that you equaled his goal tally that day and he couldn't call himself sole top scorer that year? Yeah, he, he was desperate to, yeah, to be in front of me, to be fair, but, which is a, a good competition when players you know, want to score goals and, uh, and get better than, uh, than the others. I think that's, that's why... Uh, it push you to yeah to work hard and get better. You must have been annoyed when your chip hit the crossbar though. I think we scored from the, the rebound, didn't we? I think we scored. I, I don't. I don't remember that one. I remember yeah. the, the the volley. Yeah, you scored. Uh, I think it was it might have been a header earlier on. Then the volley, you came in first time volley. And yeah. Then later on, you in front of the cover, you ch you chipped the goalkeeper from about twenty five yards or twenty yards, and yeah. it came back off the crossbar. 
I would need to. Uh, I would need to to watch watch uh, that that one too. Uh, I'll, find, I'll find that clip remember. and send it to you later on. Oh, yeah. And Please. we'll put it on this video so fans can remind themselves of it. Uh, okay. <laughs> that probably would have been your best goal for Charlton if had it gone in. I tell you that now. Really. Um, so yeah, you, you touched on it a minute ago, but the the 2013-14 season, uh, obviously things behind the scenes still not the best at Charlton. Um, and come the end of January from that season, uh, Charlton fans would always always look back at that time as being quite a dark one uh, we obviously we lost you on um, on deadline day um, we didn't want you to go the fans didn't want you to go the Chris Powell certainly didn't want you to go um, what happened that's a difficult not question but difficult time for me uh, what happened yeah. simply, simply that we had a, a new owner at the club um, I think at the end of the previous season, I was due to sign a, a new deal, which uh, was, uh, I think, done with the, the manager, of course, and uh, everything was ready to, you know, to go. And uh, yeah, the thing has changed with the new owner, who basically didn't want to give me the new deal, or and and said like, uh, it looks like uh, I was too too old. So yeah, it was. The things change uh, quite a lot, and 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 finally at the end it was just you know I've been told like uh, uh, Bournemouth made a, a a bid for me, a quite uh, like a cheap one to be honest, and uh, they were like amazed. Uh, Charlton did accept straight away, which was uh, finally stopped by uh, I don't know who did that to be fair at the, at the time, but some someone from Charlton club. Uh, said like no, you can't sell him for that, that, that money. So they increased a little bit the the bid finally, and uh, and the club was uh, okay to sell me. So for me it was a big big blow because I felt like I'm almost pushed, you know, outside the outside the the club, and I felt like everything was like changing at the club and not the good uh, the good way. Uh, I felt like uh, as we said before, you know my. My stay at Charlton, I would not have said forever because I know the manager has changed as well. But but I felt like um, something would happen maybe to the manager really soon mm. because we had like a difficult time and uh, we needed to stick together. But I didn't feel like the this owner will uh, will back uh, back the manager. And after what he said about me, I was thinking I would never get anything from him as well. And the way he wanted to manage the club with his uh, network. Saying like, uh, of course, if you need a right back, if you need this, I can have one in my club. I can. But it was like completely deluded about the the, uh, the difficulty of the of the championship. Mm. And he couldn't bring uh, his players from other clubs who will uh, straight away make an impact in uh, in championship because uh, I think Charlton was the best club he had uh, at this time, <laughs> and maybe the the t- difficult one. So you can't like uh, think football is so easy. And I felt like, oh, this guy, we're gonna go in the into the wall. So when uh, when he, he almost said like uh, I won't sell you, I felt like wow. So basically, won't sell me. He will get rid of the manager really soon if we got another like uh, defeat or, or, or difficult time. So after that, I was like, uh, unfortunately, I have to I have to go. Yeah. Of I'm course. Be, be, before that, I was like when I found myself uh, so happy at the club. I loved everything at the club, the stadium, the fans, uh, the manager, uh, my teammates. Everything was like, uh, oh, I would love to finish uh, my career at Charlton. And uh, unfortunately, you know, the change of owner uh, changed change everything in my situation, in my vision of the club. Not, of course, the, 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 the stadium, the fans didn't change, but uh, the way the club will be managed and the way it will go. I was thinking it's not, it's not good. So when he wanted to send me, I had to. Uh, at this time, I was really upset and disappointed, but I had to. He had to leave finally. Yeah, I mean, it must have been difficult considering we were in a relegation fight at that time and we were up against it, and we were essentially giving our best player away. So uh, looking, being a Bournemouth, obviously you, hit, you did very well there, hit the ground running, and, and we'll get to that in a minute as well. Um, but looking back. At that time, with Charlton struggling without you, that that must have been difficult to to have to be removed from that, I guess. Oh yeah, yeah. of course. For me, it was like heart, heartbreaking. 
because uh, I felt like uh, uh, I would not say I felt like I betrayed my uh, my teammates or, or the fans or whatever because it was not really my decision to leave, which is uh, something uh, they've tried to to say or or I've heard sometimes I was greedy or well if the people knew what I was asking for in terms of a deal, uh, that that was a joke. Eh? It was like uh, much lower than. Uh, yeah. The, the striker standout in, in the league, but so yeah, for me it was like a, nothing much. But the way is uh, the situation is like you felt I was too basically too too old and not good enough or not that good, which is fair enough for him. Uh, it, it was his decision, but he couldn't say after I left and see the fan were fuming and all uh, all that. He couldn't say like it was me who wanted to leave or. Or because I was uh, greedy or whatever, you know, it's like it was just an excuse to not uh, assume his decision. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, obviously, you came back to to the valley. I think it was for the first time when Bournemouth won the title, the the final day of the season, the uh, the, the next yeah. season. Yeah. Um, that that must have been a weird well a weird day for you because um, it was such a good day in, in that you won promotion to the Premier League, you won the title, uh, and a weird coincidence that. It happened to happen at the valley. I don't know, but uh, when I first signed for when I signed for Bournemouth, uh, uh, I remember we we finished very well and very strong. And I was like, uh, mm, if we keep the you know the same squad with a few additions, we might push for for the playoffs or maybe even even more. So when I saw the um, the fixtures uh, in that in that season, saying like, oh, chuck on the way the last game. I was like, oh, that would be a dream to get promoted there or, or to be promoted and, uh, and have a party there or I don't know. But it was like a, like a signal for me. Yeah. I mean, was it nice? Because, I mean, you, the fans applauded you. You know, they almost joined in with, with your celebrations because they were <laughs> so happy for you as an individual. Because um, yeah. they still love, you know, still love you now and they especially still loved you, you know, so much then because um, they wanted you still to be at the Valley. Um, so it was quite nice. I remember you coming into the stands at one point and, and even taking some photos of fans and stuff like that. So uh, it must have been nice personally that you could still do it with some of those fans in, in all four stands that, that thought so much of you. Yeah, it was, of course, it was um, obvious for me to, to celebrate with, the, with my uh, Bournemouth fan, of course, but with the Charlton fans as well because they have been so, so nice with me before. And, and and during that day as well, it was like uh, I felt like a, at home, and I could I couldn't expect something better than uh, I received uh, from the fans. Uh, so at the end, it was like, uh, yeah, you've played away from home, but you feel at home. Uh, the away fans uh, clap you and uh, f- seems to be happy for you as well, which is uh, crazy because you know when you are the away team, normally you're not like uh, welcome. Yeah. Or, or yeah. I, 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 at least uh, they don't really. You know, care, but this day it was like uh, I felt lots of joy for, for even from the Charlton fans for, for me, which was uh, uh, so emotional and so yeah, it's something I can't really describe. But like I feel like that's uh, uh, a big proof of uh, you know love you, you get from uh, from the fans, and uh, and I was so 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 happy. Yeah, brilliant. Um, obviously, you. you finally got to the Premier League, the, the top le- pretty much the top level of football you can get to <laughs> uh, at club football. Um, and you were, you were 32, 33 around that time, if, if I've got that I right. was uh, 33. 33, so there you go. Um, I mean, from a personal point of view, to get to that, that stage in your career, um, at that age, to, to get to the Premier League finally, um, that must have been a really proud moment, a realisation that that you, you, you will get, you know, at least some games under your belt in the Premier League. Yeah, that, uh, I think, the biggest disappointment of my football life, I would say. Because uh, I think I did, I did um, a great job, you know, the, with the team uh, to get promoted. And uh, I felt like uh, uh, after that, uh, I would deserve uh, a chance maybe uh, to start the season. Maybe just a few games, but to start the season to 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 see if I could you know cope with the uh, with the yeah with the the level of the Premier League. Uh, we had a really good partnership with the Calumusan. I think uh, we were good enough to compete both 
of course you were younger and quicker and stuff like that but i had a different uh, part of my game could be uh, good enough i would say to to give uh, to give the team something but after that football you know the manager decided to to start the season with a, a, a more pacey striker uh, with uh, Callum. So he decided to to play with um, Josh King. Mm. He was, of course, stronger and quicker than me. Uh, but yeah, I just uh, regret enough uh, to say today I've not started a game in the Prem, which is a big uh, shame for me. Yeah. Uh, you, you made the move to Reading in that January, obviously. Uh, due to that, I suppose, that you weren't getting the, the opportunities you were hoping. Um, but was there a chance you could have come back to Charlton at that time when, when you know, a situation arose where you'd be leaving Bournemouth and perhaps coming back to, down to the Championship? There was uh, some talks, but I would not say with the, really with the clubs. Or, but, of course, one part of my, uh, my uh, heart wanted to say, yeah, I would love to get back to my love club and... And uh, in the same time, I was thinking it's never that good, you know, to to go back to a club uh, you've had uh, such a, a great time, and uh, you never know what will happen. And so it was just like uh, thinking, uh, thinking about it, but I would not say it was really like uh, close to to happen, that close. No, I'm sure Charlton fans everywhere would have liked to have seen you <laughs> pull on the red of Charlton at least one more time before you before you retired. I mean. You sort of mentioned it there, but is, is that something you, any opportunity you would have you would have done? Like if if the opportunity did realistically come up, would you have come back? Uh, maybe I don't know. I could say yes or no. Just uh, I've always you know uh, done my uh, decision by uh, what I was thinking would be the the, the good decision and the best. Mm-hmm. Not of course like a financial part or, or stuff like that, but more like. A, is it the right decision? So, Charlton would have been a tough one, thinking, you know, you might maybe lose what you've achieved before and what you've done. So, it could be tricky. If you go and you're not that good, the fan will be disappointed and maybe lose their, their passion they have for you. So, so, it would have been a really tough decision to take as well. well we if still- you come back and you succeed, yeah. you are... You are well, I know, I know what my money would have been on would have happened if you had come back. But when you came back to the Valley with Reading, uh, that was another surreal day because obviously we were knee-deep in relegation trouble. It was almost certain we were going to go down. There was protests. There was yeah. all that stuff was was well established by that point. Um, you you came with Reading and you tore us to shreds. You know, you were scoring goals. You were nearly scoring even more spectacular goals from distance. I remember you came yeah. close again to doing something similar. Um, and it almost felt like the Charlton fans were pleased to see it in a, in, a, in a weird kind of, really bizarre kind of way, in a way I've never seen before or since. Because um, you, were, you were proving certain people wrong in a way. Um, oh, yeah. I think it's quite easy to, to understand. They, 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 they were happy and they mean it because that was the best way for them to, to show the, man, uh, the manager, to show the, the owner they, they did the, a big mistake by letting me go because I was like showing in live on the pitch uh, three or four years after I left or oh, yeah, three years maybe after I left when he said I was too old and still you know uh, delivering on the pitch and uh, and showing I was easy good enough to carry on when I left Charlton and uh, and the fan were so angry with him and what what he had, he had done with the club that I think that there they were like uh, happy uh, to get uh, another thing to to show him, he, he did uh, stupid things and uh, he didn't have a clue about football. Mm, yeah, <laughs> well, look, look, look what you achieved even after that with Reading, you know, get, getting to Wembley and becoming and getting very, very close again to winning promotion. Um, it, it seems like as soon as you hit the championship, you kept at that level, you know, with Charlton for a bit and then with Bournemouth and then with Reading. You proved even that, you know, in your mid 30s that you, you, you could still do it at that level. Um, was was the how was that experience of Reading nearly getting promoted with them the disappointment at losing at, at Wembley in a in a playoff final first of all playing at Wembley a big must have been a big tick off and an honour for you um, but disappointing not to 
not to finish that job if you like uh, I, I was uh, i was crying because i felt like uh, this time that's definitely your last chance to play in the prem yeah and uh, yeah. Uh, it was another yeah biggest disappointment yeah. because i felt i had a really good relationship with the with the manager yapstan i really loved him and uh, and i think he trusted me quite a lot and i was thinking this time i might be even older and and definitely too old to play in the prem for for any people who would think nah, i'm not gonna play, play but i was thinking I, I, I will get a chance with him maybe i would not take it maybe it would not be good enough maybe i would be uh, too soft or whatever or too yeah, too slow or as you can everything you can say but i was like 100 percent sure he would give me a chance a little bit like I said with the um, with uh, ADO at, Char at Bournemouth, I was thinking he will be loyal and give me the reward because I think I've done a lot for the team to get promoted. Yeah, which is something something difficult for in football because you are not here to be loyal or yeah, yeah of course. you have to think about the, being successful. So yeah. it's a difficult part of football because you want to reward the players who get you where you are. And in the same time, you think I have to put uh, the best chance for me to stay up, and so that's my biggest uh, disappointment because we were so close. Yeah, they yeah. missed the first pen, so we were close to you know two pens from uh, Premier League, and yeah. it did like a roller coaster of <laughs> crash. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, after Reading, you know, your your career, I guess you saw it as drawing to a close, and you headed back home. To, to Van, was it always your plan to to finish back home and, and play for Van again? Yeah, I don't know really for Van that season, but when I uh, I uh, released my contract with the uh, uh, reading, I felt I felt I could still you know do a job and uh, definitely I could still play one or two or three years. Uh, I have in, that in, in England. Yeah, of course, even in England, yeah. I could have stayed, but it was. Uh, Time for me to, to go home, to go back to France, see my family, my parents. Uh, you know, when you got the kids, uh, when you've been away for 15 years almost, yeah. you, only see, you only see your family, parents, friends, you know, a few times in, in a year. And, uh, and the year passed quick. Uh, your parents get older and, and at some point you, you have to consider, you know, football is uh, really important. The life is even more important. So... I wanted to, yeah, decided and with my wife, of course, and the family of the kids to go back to France. And uh, I still wanted to play in France at a high level, but uh, I didn't want to go too far. So I had uh, just a few clubs I was, uh, I would have been happy to play for. And, uh, uh, and I tried to, to sign for them, to be fair, even for, not for free, but like uh, really cheap. I was out of contract, so I was free, uh, but it didn't happen. So I decided to to sign for Van and just finish like that. Okay, I mean, oh, you're 38 now, and, and you've announced your retirement. Is there a part of you that thinks you could still go, still play? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. I could, I could. I, I've had I've had a, a really d d difficult season uh, this season. Uh, I started the, the season after three or four games. I had a, I've had like a, a neck hernia. Okay. You know, do you say what I mean? Yeah. So I've been really in a bad uh, pain for two months, which was uh, crazy because hopefully I didn't get that before mm. because it was not as important as it would have been before uh, as a professional. But I was like really uh, blocked. You know, I was it was painful and I couldn't play. Uh, and when I came back, I tried to. They tried to rush me, of course, to uh, to come back in the team. And uh, after maybe one or two weeks, I put my uh, groin or something. I had a, yeah, like a muscle injury. And uh, and after we, you know, the uh, uh, how do you say that? Uh, the training ground, I would say, in France and the level I played, and not. As good as the, in England, of course. Uh, even if it's quite good to be fan band, but uh, we had to train for almost four four months in a row on a 4G. A really bad one, really yeah. bad one. So uh, every time I came back, it was uh, difficult for me 
you know, to train uh, on it. It was not a good surface. So I get, I picked up another injury. And after I think it's like a bad uh, uh, sp spiral, spiral, yeah. Uh, and yeah, I've had a really tough, tough season. And then I uh, started to come back and uh, <laughs> the virus uh, just uh, yeah. decided for me to retire before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Made a decision for you in a way. Um, yeah, exactly. So, what's the plan now? Uh, it's obviously a really strange time, as you mentioned, to retire since we're all locked down and stuck at home and can't go anywhere. Um, but when we get back to normal, what what does norm what is normal going to look like for Jan Kermigant now going forward? Yeah, I've got a few activities and um, like investing in properties and stuff like that. Uh, I will I will follow and help my my son is playing football in my uh, in the club I, I used to play when I was young wow. okay. and uh, the good stuff is like uh, he play with uh, his um, teammates um, quite a lot of them are uh, sons of my friends I play for oh, before, I play with before so yeah. it's like uh, we know each other for 35 years. Yeah, yeah. So that's quite funny, and uh, yeah, I think I would be a bit more involved in the club to to help them to you know to yeah to play football and maybe uh, give them some uh, some uh, reflection, uh, thinking about like uh, how, how to improve. And uh, and my wife is um, gonna have a, a shop, you know, in my uh, in my town in the town so she will be working a bit later and stuff like that so i will have to look after the kids yeah <laughs> and be uh, more present at home for yeah, for the family you can you can relax a little bit now finally yeah, yeah play a different part yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay before we finish up there are a couple of final things um i wanted to ask as a fan more than anything else yeah um, there was a game against oldham at the valley in, in december 2011 uh, which always stands out for me and a lot of fans as a game that summed you up. Um, most fans don't remember it was against Oldham, but I, I looked it up. Um, you got cut to the head, so you went off <laughs> and you got, you got bandaged up. Um, and then you got another another injury on your nose, so you went off, come back again. Um, this, this is the photo. We'll, we'll put this on me. Oh, yeah. I remember you know, the one. You know the one. You know, I missed a bump from the, from the Mr. Men. I, uh, I, I don't remember the game, to be honest, but I remember the, the photo. Then. You probably don't remember it because you got such a big one. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that, for me, sums up a lot of what you were about as a player, the fight and the spirit that you had. That really, you'd have to have your leg hanging off before you'd have to be subbed off like, in that situation. Um, do you think that's part of the reason why you are so loved by... Charlton fans, and we've seen from Bournemouth and Reading fans as well. Do you think that's one of the big reasons? Um, of course, it's, it's a big reason because I think the people, and especially yeah, the fans, who play quite a lot of money sometimes to uh, to get tickets uh, or season tickets to admire or to you know support their team. The first thing they want and they, they will not accept is a, a player who don't give his best or a player a little bit lazy or that's why I think if you give your best you can maybe miss a, a touch or or miss a goal or, or make a mistake but but if they can feel that, like you are giving your best and you are fighting for the shirt I think that's something that they can almost forgive you for everything. Exactly. I mean, you had that about you. You had that fighting spirit about you, which we loved. Um, but a lot of fans also talk about your pure ability, the ball at your feet, in the air, um, free kicks, dead balls, mm. situations. You, you were a real all-rounder, which is rare, I think. Certainly rare at Charlton over the years. Uh, did you pride yourself on that, on all those things? And, you know, dead balls, the, the close control, the, the ability <laughs> in the air. Did you pride yeah. yourself on all, on all that? Um, I did, but no, but I used to practice uh, volleys. In uh, as I said, when I was young, uh, we had like a land in front of my parents' uh, home, mm. and uh, with some friends, uh, lots of boys, you know, in uh, neighbor with my neighbor, uh, and I used to practice with one of my friends who used to cross for, always from the same side, because there was like uh, some trees, you know, on the left. There was the, the goal. Yeah, and and like the land was more on the right with the road, so it was almost crossing always from the right. And I was like sometimes doing, uh, I remember even doing sometimes overhead kick and finish in the trees. Or <laughs> uh, yeah, so I used to practice quite a lot. I was uh, I love I love to do volleys and and it paid off because you certainly scored 
a lot of good ones. Of so. course, it can't be like uh, it has to be linked between. But that's that resume uh, football life or even the life. If you practice, if you train, you get better, you improve, and most of people look at uh, Ronaldo or Goodies or what he does. But the main thing he does is working hard. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure we've ever had a player that made me so certain we were going to score a goal than when we had a, a free kick just outside the box or, or 25 yards outside the box when you yeah. stood up and, and, and stepped up and put them away. Um, how much did you used to practice those? Like when you were, was that something when you were young, like the volleys, or was it something later on that on the training ground you used to just practice? I don't know. I, don't, I would not say... Um... Of course, the volley is, is something I remember and I would say, yeah, I've practiced a lot because I, I used to, to love it. And when you're only you and your friend, you can do many, many different, you know, situations. But uh, practicing free kick is, I think we all do a little bit, uh, I would say free kick when you're young and you're alone with a goal. What you do, you put the ball on the floor and you try to whip it in the, in the top bin. So if that, if that practice, I would say, yes, I've done it. But after it was more, something uh, I would say I, I love to do it and, uh, and uh, of course it's not quite often the, uh, I would say the, the target man or the big striker up front uh, take the free kick because sometimes uh, they're not uh, good for it and it's more the I would say the midfield or number 10 or, yeah, exactly. or the winger who got the whip uh, but that's yeah something I, I used to, to like. That proves a point really about you being a, an all-rounder you know, naturally. <laughs> um, but do you remember your last goal for Charlton? Uh, uh, was it, uh, I would say, uh, It was one of those free kicks. <laughs> it, was it against uh, Bolton or something, no? It was against Oxford in the um, FA Cup. Oh, Oxford, yeah. <laughs> From the kick. right. Yeah, free kick. Probably about 30 yards. It was probably the furthest one out you had for us in the straight yeah, yeah. A nice way of signing off, although we didn't want you to sign off, but it, not a bad <laughs> yeah. sign off your account for Charlton. Is there a, um, a single moment that stands out for you during your time at Charlton as, as being the most special and, and memorable for you? What, uh, one, uh, I would say, is difficult. Uh, something I used to, of course, to love and... Uh, remind me something positive at Charlton with the every time the the manager came out the uh, tunnel the corridor <laughs> come back to the pitch to do the yeah with the fans and that felt like uh, at this time I felt like yeah, we are like a family yeah you no know, it's all the club together and uh, so so many nice people uh, yeah, in the stadium uh, that's that's uh, something I think they've been used to do it after when he left. Yeah, which shows like uh, how important it was for us yeah. and for the fans. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, and of course the other thing was the uh, yeah, the promotion party uh, the, at the stadium with the uh, stadium full and uh, just uh, a really good day. Yeah. Um, just finally, do you have a, a message for all the Charlton fans out there who will be watching this and, and wishing you well on your retirement? Uh, I would like to say a big thank you. I will never thank them enough uh, for what they have done for me. Uh, everybody said they, they love you, but I would say I love them as well. Uh, and I will always support Charlton. I will always follow, follow the club. And I look forward to come back one day, which I, I will. And I really look forward to it and, uh, and say hello to, to everybody. Excellent. Yeah, and thank you Take so care. much. Um, congratulations on your retirement. I hope um, you and the family stay safe and well uh, at the moment. You too. And uh, as you say, you'll be hopefully with us next year and we'll be able to... Uh, I will, for uh, sure. I'm game as well, get you out and, and when the time comes so you can, you can say hello to everyone again. Um, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. Pleasure. Um, Always. Both to sit and chat with you today, but also to uh, watch you in a Charlton shirt. Uh, I only wish we could have had it a little bit longer than we did, but um, it was a real pleasure. Um, Thank you very much. And take care. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers, Eddie. Bye.